I'm Alex Selke. Uh, I'm a geologist at NASA Ames Research Center in California, and I study mostly volcanic rocks here on Earth um, to figure out what they're made of and how they have been deposited where they are to actually learn about them in our solar system that look just as similar to them on Earth. So that's what I mostly do in my time. Okay, cool. Well, let's jump right into it then, okay. I guess. Uh, so the first planet we have is um, Arrakis from Dune. Yeah, it looks just like a like a desert all over the entire planet in that case. So we, we see a lot of dunes in here so that means again you need some wind and actually this worm is coming out of the ground and you can see it blowing the, the dust or the sand uh, that's carried up while the thing is coming out of the ground um, blowing it to the side so and we have in other shots a lot of dunes in here and that is again you would need that with you can only have that on a planet with an atmosphere and obviously there's people walking around and they're breathing without um, having any gear around them so um, that just looks like very, like a like a usual desert in, in the Sahara in, in Africa, for example. The Nova thing here uh, that was a little bit different from um, like the Star Wars planet that we had seen is there's actually the atmosphere looks a little bit more orange, and I think how this is created in that case is because you have a it looks really windy on that planet actually, and with a lot of dunes you would assume that too but like this sand is actually carried up into the higher atmosphere that kind of like stains the atmosphere in that kind of sand color um, from whatever the sand is picked up and brought into the atmosphere. So I thought that was a neat feature that they actually thought about this, um, creating kind of like the environment um, with the atmosphere in here. Yeah, so and yeah, the atmosphere uh, colored in here is, is something that happens on Earth too. Um, and for example, I was um, driving through Texas with students um, years ago and all of a sudden the wind picked up and it picked up all the particles the sand all the dust that was like just around us and they created that kind of like orange looking sky and then once the uh, wind settled down like the obviously all the all the little dust grains fell down to the ground too and it cleared up so uh, it's really nice that they had put this in um, kind of detail in here too and yeah those dust storms are very common on earth it's not just texas um, and like you, some like re I think recently, what we had was like actually um, dust from the Sahara was picked up by the wind and was actually carried over into the U.S. Just recently, a couple of weeks ago, I think. So it's happening all over where we have wind and large areas of just kind of like dry, dusty um, plains. That this actually happens. The first scene in, in this on this planet like, where you can actually see the surface, um, you, you see a lot of broken up rocks. Basically, you see a, a big, big old valley that this um, spacecraft is kind of like diving into and following along to, to a structure that's at the end. And this looks really like something that could have been produced by a glacier, actually. So a huge um, body of ice that kind of like sits there and as it's snowing and we see those um, tall mountains that almost look like Alpine mountains or the Alps or Himalaya, um, something like that, um, you see that there's snow on top. So that would make a perfect explanation of that that could be having in the past that would have been a, a glacier where the ice is kind of like created by snowing on top of the mountain and it's just getting um, more and more. So it gets heavier and heavier. And then the snow is actually compacting into, into ice and that gets more and more and the gravity just pulls it to the lowest point it can go and then it kind of like moves forward away from the mountain down the flanks and kind of carves out with this body of ice just kind of like yeah just kind of like ripping out the underground slowly by moving forward and kind of carving out that kind of u-shaped um, valley that we see where the spacecraft is kind of like trying to land over here and another indication of that this is actually a, a, like a u-shaped or glacier valley in that case is with a little debris that we see also laying on the floor of that valley uh, larger boulders smaller boulders and then we also see kind of like the really fine-grained sediment over there that's all really common in terms of like when there was a glacier and then it had melted away because of some sort of warming event on the planet itself The first shot is 
very kind of trippy for me. You can see like something solid apparently below and on the top of the screen. Um, looks like almost to me that was within a glacier, like there's like vertical crevices or openings where you could fall inside and die. Um, but this seems to be a really large one because you can apparently go with the spacecraft through. Apparently those are supposed to be clouds of frozen um, water and CO2. First of all, clouds are always frozen. It's always ice crystals that form clouds. Um, it's not just water vapor, it's actually ice crystals that we see in the clouds on Earth. But in that case, it looks like it's a huge chunk of really dense ice in that case. And it's, the gravity or the physics on that planet must be really off um, from what we know here on Earth that like a cloud could of that kind of volume and that mass essentially can actually hover in the, in the, in the atmosphere like that. So it essentially is the way this can happen would be a, a, a density issue in here. So like the atmosphere would be as much as dense as the cloud itself. Then this could be a reality. Uh, but judging from how the spacecraft flies through this scene and the people actually walking on the surface in, in the next one, um, it seems unlikely to me that this would be a really denser atmosphere, that this could actually float or be buoyant so that it doesn't like fall, go down or up, um, to just stay stable like that. It's, it's a very unusual, like almost impossible way to have this in reality, unless you're really on a strange planet that has some sort of physics that are not the ones that we have um, in our universe. Is there anything about it, the, these planets floating next to a black hole that could just make things just completely add anything possible? Yeah, I mean, so if you have you had something closer to the planet that had also a really strong gravitational pull that could pull off something, uh, had that kind of influence to pull off uh, the cloud or the ice into kind of like have it hover around. That would be one explanation, but at the same time, it would not just um, affect that ice that's floating around or makes it float around. It also would affect the actual planet itself. So it pro probably would want to rip more off the planet. So uh, we didn't see that in that case either. So yeah, it would be very foolish to think that only the, the floating stuff would be affected by that other gravity, whatever it might be, uh, like a black hole somewhere in the distance or a different planet close by that had that gravitational pull on it. So yeah, so this planet in here, we can see it's covered with water and it doesn't seem to be very shallow. So first thing I thought is close to the coast, but there's apparently no um, land mass close by. So confusing or surprising, I should say, was to see that there's this huge wave coming towards the astronauts. Um, and it's questionable like where all that water came from. Um, it looks like this is going to be a tsunami and a tsunami is usually created in, like some sort of um, earthquake um, on the water where like you have a plate and it kind of cracks and it creates an offset. So it pushes up a body of water and like the other ones lower it down. And that creates kind of like a wave that's propagating from, from away from that. Um, but you, in order to create a tsunami or wave that is that high and it looks like it's a couple of hundreds of feet high, um, mm -hmm. which is impressive. Um, you would need a really, a, a really large offset. And then also the water needs to come from somewhere. What is unusual or unrealistic in this case is you, usually when you have a tsunami approaching you, the water is kind of like draining away and you have kind of like that, um, it's pull, would pull you towards the, the wave first. And you don't see anything in that video in here. You don't see any like water flowing in a certain direction. It just hangs out like in a, in a lake with just waves on top of each other. But it doesn't seem to kind of drain in a way towards the, this wave that's just approaching. So I thought that was um, very surprising to see, especially in the panned out shot where you can see the, the spacecraft just sitting there and it's just kind of like a little wavy on the surface, but there's not kind of like a stream towards going towards that big old wave in that case. Yeah, it's just huge. It's very surprising to me to see that this can be actually reality in that case. Again, the physics in this movie are way different than what we have here in our universe. The movie itself and the plan is like, if, if they're all close to a black hole, the physics are probably much different than not being close to a black hole. So this is why things can be really strange and it's why the movie was made. 
the only only problem that I have with that explanation, like with the pull of that black hole, um, would be the wave seems to be really sharp and um, really steep. Um, if you have uh, something pulling from like a black hole, you would think that the bulge is actually much smoother. It's not as steep. It would be more like this or like smoother, smooth out a little bit more. So it must be a really focused gravitational pull that it can create that kind of wall that was shown uh, in that case. So yeah, it's yeah, it's really still really difficult to think about this. The first parts of the scenes here look just fine. It looks just like a planet that has vegetation on it. And it's like a, just like something you would see in South America somewhere, a jungle theme, maybe Indonesia. So the only thing that I found very interesting is later on where you can see the scene where there's kind of like trees or vegetation and they have boulders of rocks in them and they just kind of like grow into the sky and apparently take them up. And they seem to kind of defy gravity. It seems to be like really stable, this setup, and that there's whole entire huge blocks of rock just floating in the air, which would not be a thing on Earth. It would just collapse. The gravity, gravitational pull is too high to actually, that the plants even could hold up this kind of rock into the air. So I thought that was very, very fantasy-like. This is nothing really anything close to reality. Um, because, you know, you could always make that argument, okay, there's something else um, somewhere in the orbit close to that planet that is kind of like having exertion of like a gravitational pull that this could kind of like float a little bit higher in, in the ground or easier or that the gravity is not as, as strong so that this thing can actually be up in the sky. But at the same time, um, you see those um, civilizations running around just like on Earth. So the gravitational pull is more something that we have. So. From one perspective, it might make sense if you have, let's say like, oh, there's something uh, that's pulling it up. And at the same time, the, the inhabitants just walk around just normal mm -hmm. as we would on Earth. So, you know, if you put those things together, it doesn't make sense anymore. But it's, I mean, I can say something. I mean, I don't know how large these things would be, um, but if it's some sort of magnetic thing, you could, you know, you, you kind of have two magnets that, um, if you're having the same poles exposed to each other, they don't want to get close to it, so they actually want to stay away. Um, so that could be could be an explanation that things could hover around like this. At the same time, if what I think you would need a large um, magnetic field to these kind of like huge boulders or chunks of rocks to float like that in in, in the air, um, and that would create some sort of secondary effect on the atmosphere that other things that are might be magnetic would actually get pulled to it. Um, I can't see that there's anything like a metal, uh, like an iron weapon or something in their hands that would actually get pulled to it. So it could be an explanation that like some sort of magnetic field is actually true, but I would somehow think that there's some sort of secondary effect that you could see that this magnetic field would create that would alter the surroundings in a different way. And especially like, I don't know, but there's birds flying around. They seem to be not affected by a strong magnetic field. All right, well, the first scene in here, that planet is like, it has an atmosphere, it has clouds, and then you can see kind of like the, the ocean and the land mass. And then this um, spaceship kind of like penetrates through the atmosphere and it actually creates this tail of, of condensed, I guess, water or something like that. Um, because it's hitting the engines of the air aircraft and kind of heat it up and then creates that um, kind of trail of condensed water because it's cooling again. Just similar to like um, the trails that airplanes leave um, once they're flying through um, the air. And yeah, it's landing in an area that in the first shot, like the white angle, where it's almost hitting the ground, um, it looks really um, almost like a volcanic terrain where we have these cones Tephracon, we call them Tephracon, where we have those um, kind of fountaining events that we had discussed earlier in, in on the planet, uh, the Star Wars planet. But in that case, they're kind of like sitting around. It's kind of like little grains that are like maybe this big kind of little nuggets of lava pieces that kind of like form around the, the hole where the lava had fountained out, call that event. And then once it kind of pans into like looking 
from the underside where this spacecraft is landing, you can see the rocks that are actually pointy and sharp, and it has actually layers. So that looks completely different to the shot before. Uh, this looks more like a, almost a sedimentary rock where you have kind of layers of rocks deposited over time, and then they fracture and kind of stick out, pointing uh, the individual layers into whatever direction. And that is kind of like sedimentary environment, uh, kind of speaks for when the person leans down and actually picks up a rock. And what I can see is that they're actually a little bit rounded. So that speaks for um, erosion, where the rocks are being carried in a, in a stream of river, something like that. They're actually tumbling around and then kind of smoothens out the edges over the time it's kind of like getting, um, traveling within the bed stream or riverbed. Uh, downflow, so that looks like this kind of scene in here, which makes sense with the scene before where we kind of, where I kind of thought it was sedimentary rock. And in the next scene over here, there you can see um, there's a settlement in the background, and then you have this cliff of, of rocks, and you can see those individual layers. So that is a sedimentary rock. That means there was some sort of water body on early on in the history of this planet or this region that just like had deposited. Um, the rocks over the time by sedimentation and then have evaporated, um, which is in contrast to what we had seen earlier. So it's very interesting that like there's a lot of different uh, geological units within like a really um, small region in that case. Yeah, and then the next scene where you can see um, something in the background is creating a lot of dust and then it zooms in and I found that was really cool to see. You have this kind of like desert area um, where you can see kind of the ripples of, of kind of like dunes. Um, and then something is spurring on the ground and the way the rock fractures, I thought was, was done very nicely in that case. Um, I don't know exactly what that thing is that's like plowing through the ground, but um, it looks fairly realistic in, in the way the, the rock actually breaks into kind of like plates and then it sh shoot up a little bit and then fracture even more. So I thought that was really nicely done. The only thing that I, that I maybe wouldn't have expected as much is like the, the, the dust that's kind of like created by this. It, it seems that all these little sand grains that were sitting on there were shooting up quite a bit higher than I would have expected in, in that case. But again, it could be simply, simply a thing due to gravity. This planet might have a lower gravity where it's easier for things to fly higher into the ground, for example. So we, we just want to obviously say thank you to Dr. Selke. Yeah. Is, there, is there any way they, they can follow you if they want to? There's, there's no way they can follow you or anything like that? No, no, not really. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like a recluse. I just do science and be in my lab and be out in the field and do my things. Um, I publish papers, so you could look through online journals for my last name and see what I work on and read the papers. They're very scientific, obviously, but maybe you find them interesting. So we'll yeah. look up Dr. Saki's papers if you're interested. Uh, he's just a really good guy and we really appreciate him uh, helping us to learn all of these things. Uh, we really appreciate his knowledge uh, and expertise. Um, check out the other video he did on Star Wars Planets. It'll be sure. somewhere here. Uh, if you've missed it, uh, it's really good. And uh, again, thank you to Dr. Selke and uh, Generation Films. Catch you next time. All right. Bye-bye.